The Potomac Institute for Policy Studies is a not-for-profit 501c3 headquartered here in the Washington, D.C. area that focuses on the issues of science and technology and science and technology policy as it affects uh, our society. The Potomac Institute has worked very hard around Washington, D.C. to build a reputation of being fiercely independent. We believe very strongly that sound policies should be based on sound science and technology, that the development of policy should not be driven by your, your religion or your political beliefs. We're very proud here at the Potomac Institute to have with us uh, an all-star uh, lineup of folks that include uh, General Al Gray, a former commandant of the Marine Corps, the Marine's Marine, if you will, Charles Hertzfeld, who is the former director of defense research and engineering and the former director of DARPA all the way through to some of our very renowned senior fellows. The Potomac Institute for Policy Studies is made up of three entities. The first is uh, what we call basic research. That part of the institute I run personally, and it's a personal endeavor of the institute and its fellows providing advice, testimony, and written documents to Congress on an as-requested basis. The second division is called Strategy Planning and Programs, run by retired Marine Corps Colonel Tom O'Leary. What's gratifying about doing this work is it gives us an opportunity to continue to contribute to uh, something that almost everybody at Potomac Institute has devoted, if not all of their adult life, the large majority of their adult life to, which is supporting and enhancing the security of the United States. The Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security have been our two principal customers. Potomac is known for its, its senior level staff. We also have some young individuals that have come on the research staff who are just starting out and they also want to be involved in supporting the national security of the United States and what's gratifying is to work with them and help mentor and train them and see them grow. CEDO stands for the Center of Emerging Threats and Opportunities. It's located in Quantico, Virginia. Uh, it's a direct support of the Commanding General of the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory. It falls into the greater Potomac uh, structure in that it's a subordinate element of the Strategy, Plans, and Programs Division. We are always looking for areas that people in, in the Marines are asking questions about, and then it's our job to answer those questions. The third part of the Institute we call Academic Centers. This organization is run by Dr. Jim Giordano. The Academic Centers at the Potomac Institute for Policy Studies afford an opportunity to engage in high-level scholarship by conjoining not only leading experts in the field who are resident here at the Potomac Institute, but also by reaching out to a variety of universities and other academic institutions, both nationally and internationally. Presently, we have a number of academic centers inclusive of the Center for Neurotechnology Studies. Over the past 20 years, neuroscience has made ardent leaps and strides through the use of a variety of different technologies. It becomes very important to understand how these technologies can be used, and much more importantly, how they should be used in areas such as healthcare, the public sphere, and even national defense, security, and intelligence. A pressing problem on the world stage, of course, is militancy and terrorism. That is why another one of our academic centers is the International Center for Terrorism Studies, as led by Professor Yona Alexander. The major threat uh, to the United States and the world uh, after 9-11 is uh, whether the worst is yet to come, meaning the escalation from the conventional threat to the biological and the chemical and radiological and nuclear. This is really the major threat. And then again, from the technological point of view, the cyber terrorism, the Potomac Institute for Policy Studies is providing the infrastructure uh, for uh, training the future generations of the young people who can assist in reducing the threat of terrorism and bringing it to manageable levels. Science and technology is revolutionizing the way we live, the way we work, the way we prosper, and sometimes the way we don't prosper around the world. Our role has been to bring together people from across the spectrum of science and, and philosophy and the arts to discuss the role of science and technology investment in the furtherance of humankind.